So hello, welcome all. We are welcoming you to the session Is the Testing Pyramid Obsolete uh, in the AI Gen Era by Neha Gupta. So without further delay, over to you Neha Gupta. Thank you and uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you everybody for joining and quickly share my screen. Uh, hi everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, different aspects of uh, uh, testing pyramid and t testing strategy, what it was. There were many shapes introduced, so you would see uh, uh, different objects here. So it's like inspired from testing honeycomb, testing ice cream, we know what it cone, uh, this testing pyramid, right? We're going to talk uh, all about those and uh, how in this Gen AI era uh, things are changing, right? Um, so we're going to introduce that also, by the way. A little bit about myself, I'm one of the co-founders of Deploy. It's a backend test generation open source tool. Um, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about that. But uh, before we go forward uh, and talk directly about testing pyramid, uh, I would want to take a poll. I'm not sure how many people would join because uh, the session started new. Um, but if you aren't here and uh, listening to me, uh, like, I would want to know, like, why do you test uh, at your org? You can quickly scan this QR code and, uh, you know, cast your vote. Uh, so this would, I I did a similar uh, poll on my LinkedIn. Uh, and, you know, here is the result on that. I'm going to share that quickly. So... It was pretty evident that, uh, you know, people want feedback on our code and they want to write test cases um, to, you know, to, to find bugs and regressions. So, and it is also pretty evident that they want to write test cases, right? Everybody uh, wants their code, uh, wants to gain the confidence on their code. So, I'm sure here everybody has heard or seen testing pyramid. Uh, so I'm going to take you a little back in the history around what series of event was invented uh, and, you know, how the definition changed over the time. So, uh, I was listening to a few industry leaders and uh, uh, looking at the definitions of how unit testing like was introduced and different testing levels in the world. Uh, so unit testing definitions actually shifted a little bit. So in the pyramid, unit testing is the first that uh, that comes right? So the concept of unit testing was uh, first referenced in the 1970s by Panzu uh, in his paper Automatic uh, Software Test Drivers. And in this work, Panzu cited that an IBM, IBM manual, which was from like way older, 1960s or 70s, uh, which, you know, is uh, not really publicly available. So uh, I couldn't find reference to those, but uh, with the limited information available on the uh, definition of unit testing. Uh, so the term unit test can be interpreted in two ways, according to that. It may refer to the unit code being executed during the test, or it could denote the specific unit test, uh, unit under the test, right? So, uh, post this, I think in 1979, the book uh, Art of Software Testing was published and it became well known, featuring a chapter module uh, testing. Uh, in this, I think in 1990s, unit testing framework gained popularity. You know, all because of Ken Park introduced X unit and you know uh, those who doesn't know is uh, like father of extreme programming uh, introduced that. So uh, particularly with the PHI and extreme programming community, uh, which you know, Ken Beck started, these frameworks often define a unit as a piece of test code that could be executed rather than you know strictly referring to the unit under test. So Post this, uh, there is an interesting development that occurred uh, with the release of a second edition of the Art of uh, Software Testing. Uh, in this new edition, the chapter previously titled 
sorry. Yeah. Uh, the chapter that was previously titled uh, Module Testing was renamed to Module and Unit Testing. So, although the content remained same, but it was intri- like it was observed that how definition of unit testing you know evolved from even first chapter to the second chapter on you know the context story uh, over time and how these uh, permeated through the industry and and maybe unintentionally people started using those in the new definitions with the with those definitions. So one of the earliest mentions of the testing pyramid. Uh, dates back in 2003 um, although there is no primary resource for this but uh, Martin Fowler noted that Mike Cohn introduced the concept of conscience uh, uh, of unit testing in a conscience so uh, you know he also later mentioned that in uh, his book nine, in two, 2009 um, which was called Succeeding with Agile but uh, then Martin Follower also wrote, uh, you know, on the basis of that book and uh, what he discussed with my phone and saw him presenting in a conference uh, that, uh, you know, uh, you have a pyramid, he officially, uh, like, uh, documented that. And it it was believed that pre-testing pyramid, uh, industry had a notion that test automation is slow and expensive and you know, there was no different levels of uh, automating tests, uh, if that makes sense, right? Uh, post this, so around 2006, the founder of Selenium, Jason Huggins, uh, he shared his understanding of testing pyramid or the web apps. And Martin Fowler also shared, uh, you know, his thoughts about testing pyramid and assumptions for that and, uh, you know, um, the most I like about, you know, his definition is uh, that the pyramid is, you know, based on the assumption that broad stack tests are expensive, slow and brittle, uh, as compared to the focus test, which are limitless. So, while this is usually true, there are exceptions. If, there, if my high-level tests are fast, reliable, and cheap to modify, then lower-level tests aren't needed. So, I mean... Uh, this is pretty evident that if we are able to automate the higher level test, we don't need the lower level test. Uh, we don't need to write much period or integration test and it would become an inverted goal. But is that practically possible? Uh, so I'm going to talk about that. So, you know, as the testing pyramid concept, gained traction, automating things uh, became very prevalent and you know the services led was uh, expanded into three distinct lands because you can't write integration tests for like, everything that your application is uh, interacting or doing. So uh, it was divided into component integration and API tests. So additionally the uh, there was this cloud that you see in this is like the manual test cloud this indicated that manual test is separate from the pyramid and it can occur at any stage of the testing process uh, integration test is a middle ground but in the past uh, the speed of writing tests and you know uh, it has been very slow so that's why we used to write unit test more and now technology is constantly evolving so uh, you know, things are changing uh, power move aspects and the next few slides. But while programmers were trying to adopt the testing pyramid, Todd Pardor, uh he raised an argument with practical implementation in that. So uh, there were two primary reasons. Uh, one was that, you know, it the, the pyramid, if they're implementing that, it misses the market use. That is like determining determining whether uh, the project itself is a good idea or uh, uh, we are delivering the right thing or not. Uh, but I understand like is where is coming from. Uh, but I do feel that uh, whether or not the entire project is correct is 
is it something that you should be building or not that is kind of out of scope of the testing pyramid so that needs to have been decided and determined before even you get to the stage of the testing pyramid uh the second argument that he raised is most more more compelling um that the pyramid implies volume at different levels so this is what we have talked about already that the pyramid shows uh that you should have more unit tests and then integration tests and then do it uh because unit tests are cheaper to write but should that really be the primary concern uh surely it should be more about the value and risk uh addressed by the test and if one type of testing is providing substantially you know more value in and saving more more bits then the other types of uh, uh the testing is uh something that you should not have focus on or should be spending uh effort on so instead of worrying about the number of tests that you have at each level it would be better to look at the risk present in the system which martin paler also said uh when discuss about that uh the upcoming site and and you know uh he also mentioned that build the test coverage of both completely to address those risks uh not just with a unit test uh and at the end of the day we have to remember that this pyramid is a model we focus ev- like we or we should focus really uh you know on where the risk lies in terms of the project uh and and regardless of whether it fits into the plan or uh, into the uh, pyramid or not right um so i actually mentioned that uh so during these times uh, many organizations fell into a trap of ice cream cone so this was an anti pattern and it was like an inverted pyramid uh this happened because you know organizations neglected uh to establish a culture of where developers were encouraged to create more than it test or need the project um uh, and that eventually led to you know more responsibility on the testing and accurating uh and over reliance on them uh and and you know over reliance not on qa but the servers on the ui and the test uh to compensate for um but despite the rise of uh, agile and devops in the next slide i'm going to talk about that a clear distinction often remain between developers and testers especially in large organizations where testing qa teams uh, might not have access to the code base uh, more about and not just creating unit tests more tests uh, were created as files uh, that led to this anti pattern and another reason an organization spent into this trap was pressure from the upper management or stakeholders so uh, you know sometimes they didn't understand fully understand the testing uh, need and the process and uh, they were just blindly trying to follow uh, a standard and these constraints uh, led to the focus on end to end test more dem- uh, demonstrate functionality rather than ensuring the code worked out at, at a unit level so in such situations uh it was crucial uh, to educate others on the importance of talent test and uh you know make proper strategies across all layers to ensure you know you have longer term projects of this uh and and in what what every project uh you know you might have to decide it in shape and uh subversion of tests that you are writing um and and uh, there was a nice comment by john stevenson in our like in view for that uh he pointed out that uh, over the lines on a manual test or on the uh top e to e level test that could actually create a melting at the top of the curve uh, which would you know create a mess in the other layers and uh you know highlights in the inefficiency and the unsustainability of focusing solely on and doing best and what they are against uh so yeah, i think enough for me talking on this uh this this anti pattern but in conclusion uh while the testing pyramid is 
build a useful model for distributing tests and it's essential to focus on risk and implementation tests in strategies. Um, uh, if the, that can uncover those risks. Uh, but balancing the cost of implementation, maintaining the test uh, against the risk, mitigate, uh, mitigate and you know, uh, balance and recovery with it is a key to effective software testing. Cool. So I talked about illegal projects. So would want to touch a bit on, uh, you know, in agile projects, uh, testing servers. Uh, 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 testing services is uh, uh, two distinct, uh, I would say, have two distinct motives or purposes. Um, so, supporting programming is one, and then, uh, you know, critiquing a product is the other. So, the term testing has different uh, connotations in these contexts. Uh, supporting programming involves preparing and reassuring, test, clarify, thinking, and uh, you know, uh, illustrate design code behavior, provide reassurance, and occasionally find bugs that would come in supportive programming. Um, and conversely, uh, the critiquing product, uh, if you think about that goal, then the focus primarily is on finding bugs. This aspect will define the identi ident uh, identity of managed testers. Right? So consider an experiment, let's say. Uh, replace testing term with a checked example. Right? So uh, imagine there were two X XP programmers using example to guide coding. They create an example, check it, update the code, and verify all the uh, examples remaining valid if if the examples are still remaining valid uh, moving to the next example uh does this statement shift the terminology change in your perspective uh, that's a question that you need to ask um, does asking for an example instead of a test make a difference uh an experiment to see if this uh this whole process enhance understanding and communication uh, within the agile teams. So you would see a quadrant here and the quadrant numbering system is in, in, in testing does not imply a sequential order. So it's an arbitrary system used for convenience, um, allowing us to, you know, refer Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, the person all read that uh, since I knew. So, uh, Projects would often start from Q2, I would say. Uh, Q2 test because they include uh, examples that become specifications and testing uh, that guide code uh, along with the prototypes. However, uh, some projects may begin with Q4. Uh, so Q4 tests such as uh, performance testing, if that is a priority in case where requirements are uncertain, projects might start with exploratory testing, which is Q3. So Q3 and Q4 tests generally require some deployable code, but teams typically iterate through all quadrants quickly and in small increments. So uh, they might write a test for all those small features and develop the code, automate additional tests, uh, conduct exploratory and performance testing, then move to the next feature incrementally, and the quadrant serve just like, you know, a, a denotion or a taxonomy to help teams plan their testing and ensure they have uh, necessary resources. There are no strict rules about what belong in each portion, but people use them as a framework during release team and, you know, iteration, planning to prioritize testing from the outside. Now, coming back to how you know, pyramid and the different shapes were evolving. Uh, interestingly, in 2008, uh, 18, sorry, in 2018, uh, Spotify released Honeycomb uh, in one of their blogs. And some adopters came, also came up with this testing dynamic. 
but interestingly, Spotify mentioned for all microservices, we use only integration tests because you know it gives the best confidence and best flexibility to do the refactoring. And we have decoupled tests from our actual code. And they meant that we should focus on integration tests. Uh, have we implemented uh, integration tests? Uh, yes, mostly. And implementation detail tests? Not much, if needed. Right. So, ideally, they mentioned none. Uh, and since the definition of integration test also varies a lot, uh, Spotify also clearly defined that difference in integrated versus integration uh, needs to be understood right. So integrated is a test that, uh, you know, will pass or fail based on the correctness of another system. Uh, there are some signs that they mention. So, for example, uh, for integrated tests, the signs will be we spin up other services in a local test environment while testing our application. We test against other services in our shared testing environment. What are changes to your system breaks? Um, uh, uh, like, there are changes when your system breaks for the other systems. And this is quite a fragile uh, way of testing, I would say, because, uh, you know, Spotify also recommended learning more uh, from that blog. But uh, over in overall, they suggested most stuff quite fragile way of testing. We should be avoiding integrated there. Uh, we should be aiming for integration tests instead, uh, which is, you know, verify the correctness of the service in more isolated fashion while focusing on interaction points and making one very explicit. So, yeah, after this, uh, overall, Honeycomb you can use where the complexity lies more in the integration than the code itself. And still we have integrators because they give us the most confidence and because it resembles real user behavior. However, we can't write many to e because they are slower to write and execute things on more. And uh, uh, serverless apps, uh, unit tests have lower ROI. So again, integration tests are on the real ground. Um, then in the same year, uh, Ken C. Dodds, he tweeted about this testing trophy. He also suggested writing more integration tests like Spotify for the ease of refactoring and introducing static analysis uh, to ensure type safety, which further got reduced, you know, uh, which, which reduced the need of in a unit test uh, further. So, this is this is like the more detailed version that I found. Uh, I think it was by VMware engineers. So basically, it adds those external uh, handles, right? external test cases as a hand to the trophy, because there will always be tests that you can write or control because of the external system impact, um, and and. You can't since you can't control those. Uh, you should run the discovery, but uh, you know those come with more expense, and uh, uh, you need to spend more time uh, figuring out those. So, yeah, I mean, similar to integration test, uh, what Spotify also mentioned, uh, this testing trophy also focuses on uh, you know the mid layer. Uh, of integration test to be broader. So, uh, I like this detailed uh, version as well as, you know, uh, this simply uh, arrow. So, this is the basic foundation for the testing trophy as can see those uh, solve. But apart from just a proportion, you should also uh, care about the confidence of the test cases that you are getting. Uh, while you are going up in the uh, trophy or the pyramid. So if you are writing lower level tests, you are solving smaller problems and they are easy to debug and go higher in the pyramid or the trophy. It will be higher, it will be uh, like harder for you to write tests, but 
you are solving for a bigger problem which would be harder on uh harder to code or debug later right so uh, now the question might arise that after all these different shapes and strategies the testing pyramid get obsolete uh answer is no uh martin fowler also all following on when he wrote a blog about it he explained that the terms unit and integration tests are inconsistent uh, with their definitions when we meet people. So uh, it just complicates discussions and the testing strategies. And he described that uh, it's just different style of uh, unit tests uh, that we do in our testing pyramid. And you can think of them as uh, two uh, different types of unit tests. One soci sociable and second is solitary. So, forcible tests are when the te tested unit relies on the other unit to fulfill its behavior. More like what other people define integration tests like. And solitary tests are completely isolated when tested. So, according to him, honeycomb, trophy, and others, uh, other different shapes definition of unit test is specifically what he called a solitary test, uh, like solitary unit test. And integration test was very much down what he called a sociable unit test. Uh, he also advocated for focusing on, you know, more uh, like writing clear and reliable tests rather than debating on the proportion of how, much, how many uh, tests should be write at what level. So uh, it's very important to understand the testing terms, I understand, but uh, creating effective and meaningful tests uh, and understanding what works for the risk of your application is the most important. Uh, so yes, I mean, testing pyramid is still valid if you understand the right definitions. Uh, so that's a good news. Uh, but before going to the Gen AI era, I would love to uh, you know, take a poll here if people are listening uh, that, you know, what is our most challenged uh, that you faced while attending any AI test generation tool. Now, well, you you might have tried different. I I don't want to name them, but LLMs um, while test generation. I think it would take time to capture the responses and share it after this. Yeah, so. No matter what, uh, the common problem that I've seen is the tests are not executable uh, and, you know, uh, still people are trying to uh, write, maybe trying to refactor the existing test cases uh, uh, with AI. That helps a bit uh, accurately, but, uh, you know, eventually, with the evolving AI ecosystem, are seeing that uh, there's this testing type being made where uh, you know the static part remains the same, but uh, you know the unit test generation is majorly taken away by AI because if you give up uh, uh, maybe few set 10 20 percent of uh, unit test if you write those rest of it can be uncovered by uh, like they're good at learning from existing tests and generating both you're also doing an experiment i uh, read that meta nm uh, paper which um you know mentions that if you do the right prompt engineering if you iterate uh, over the test generated by the nm uh, on different test cases, and again, and you, you discard the failed test cases, you discard those cases that doesn't have ad coverage, then you would be able to uh, like get a good amount of unit test coverage uh, without writing much test cases. So most of the unit test writing could be taken by AI if it was mature a bit. Now, coming to the integrating test, uh, so there are different techniques that are being used with GNI today. For example, the record replay. Uh, and with that, the AI is able to take away like almost half of 
uh, the integration test work. Yep. Uh, but it is not a case with the the E two E test. In the E two E test, it is able to give you more better scenarios or the API inputs uh, or external inputs. Uh, thinking about those permutations and combinations, but it is not good at you know creating like test with the mocks or you know setting up test environments. Um, that itself would be challenging uh, with AI. And so uh, it is eventually, the world is eventually moving towards this uh, testing drive. Um, but I think there's still some time uh, that we really mature the tools around us. Uh, so here's an experimental demo of uh, how we try to achieve this testing guide with AI uh, for testing purpose. So with Deploy, uh, by the way, it's an open source project. You can check it out on GitHub. Uh, so we tried to implement this testing guide by, you know, if you give the it's a schema. So the AI testing piece of, of the unit testing piece is there on the machine. It's pretty simple. If you have existing tests, you do deploy unit you know, generate will be able to generate test cases, but the integration testing is something that I would want to focus on because most of the shapes want to focus on that. Um, so you just give the, let's say, schema JSON uh, to the AI. As I mentioned, it would be able to think of all the scenarios quickly. And then you can use the static record replay um, and, you know, can capture those mock states, make those readable capture those locally with you. So here, the, I think more than 300 test cases are generated for the simple application. But now it is not practical for me to go to, through all these uh, 300 test cases. Um, so what it would do is uh, you, with the help of AI and, you know, uh, and also the, like learning the different code paths every test case is covering, we can deduplicate the test cases and find out that which are the best test cases that cover most of the, uh, you know, most of the uh, lines of code. But that is from the developer perspective. If you want to cover different use cases and edge cases, you should definitely keep, uh, you know, more than the minimal uh, test coverage uh, test cases. So once you do that, uh, we were able to increase the test coverage, uh, like within a few minutes. Uh, to 93 percent and uh, we were able to also check and validate like find regressions whenever they are whenever somebody makes a pr and uh, they want to quickly check if there is a regression use we would run these test cases since you know these are created as yamos within your code itself uh we would run these uh, uh request and response and we would walk the external calls, uh, those are also stored as mock YAML here. Uh, and and uh, it will be pretty fast and light then that way. So, yeah, I mean, uh, that's how we tried the practical implementation of uh, combining AI with the static uh, text writing with uh, record replay techniques uh, to make it possible uh, and uh, easier for uh, people to implement uh, testing right. Um So in conclusion, I think it's a complex world with continuous changes. Um, there's everything that is interconnected, uh, so can't keep everything static. But all we need to think is that we need to unlearn the old ideas and embrace the new reality. Uh, you know, when you do trusting and deployment, it is just the start, not the end. And, uh, uh, test coverage, if I say, I hear a lot of uh, uh, developers saying, if I have test coverage, I'll be confident. So it's not the confident, uh, uh, it's not the guarantee metric, it's just the confidence metric. So uh, it doesn't guarantee that you, know, you would have puffed in the images. A failure is inevitable, even if you, you know, have 100 percent unit test, API test coverage, and DD test coverage. Uh, so, 
be prepared for that. Uh, all you need to do is balance your uh, prevention and detection with mitigation and recovery. Uh, yeah, I leave you with the you know, quote by uh, Ken Beck that, you know, uh, this is majorly for developers because I feel he was uh, complaining that developers don't focus on writing test case. Um, and, you know, it's a vicious cycle because, um, you know, they feel more pressure when the unit tests are skipped at lower level. Uh, fewer tests are written and, you know, it is less, it, it becomes less productive for uh, upper layer implementers and, you know, then eventually things are left and uh, what would become less stable. Uh, you will feel more pressure in the next release cycle and your know, observation circle that would keep on going. So breaking out of it requires good influence. Sometimes a simple testing for work that lets us do little things uh, and you know make a big big difference so yeah happy to take any questions I these are some of the references uh, you know where I found this information that I shared today thank you Neha this was really good your uh, presentation slides were good and I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the session and uh, Neha thank you so much have a good day thank you very much thanks